Hello everyone, this is Jotto bringing you the Hearthstone Weekly, bringing you the top 8 players from both of Mana Grinds tournaments, bringing you the sideboard tech and the deck of the week. So, on to the top 8 for the NA tournament. There are both top 8 lists here this week. First place, Muffins. Second place, Sukoshi. Third place, Spaj TFU. Fourth place, Amazing Fool. Fifth place, Hell's Gamers. Fifth place, The Shiv. 5th place the Trump, and 5th place 3 Vo. Keep in mind that because of the format, it's not Swiss right now, it's because of the format they're all tied for 5th, once he gets to 5th. 3rd and 4th place depends on who they lost to, Sparge lost to Muffins, so he goes up to 3rd, but the rest of them are all tied for 5th. On to the EU, 1st place Worshime, 2nd place Recon Raccoon, 3rd place Jin. 4th place, Oofman, 5th place, Black Pearl, 5th place, Frail Sar, 5th place, Final Fantasy, and also Turtle Dash. Again, 4 5th places, because the actual format was single elimination this time. Very different format to what we're used to. Now, this week, and for future weeks, I do not have deck lists for all the top 8. However, there are deck lists for the few top so for EU, there's first and second place, and also for the US, there's first, second, and third. I will put the links to these decks in the description because it's a bit it's a bit weird due to the format, which was you had two decks, and if you lost, you could change them, but if you won, you could just change any card. So there wasn't really any deck lists. So what they are is just the baseline stuff. So if you want to go see them, I'll put links in the description. But anyway, on to a new segment. The show got a bit of a revamp this week. This is the sideboard tech. Now with the new format, you can change cards in your deck between games, sideboarding effectively. So every week I'm gonna talk about two sideboard cards that don't really work in main deck, but do work in the sideboard. This week I'm gonna talk about Scarlet Crusader and Harrison Jones. Onto the Scarlet Crusader. It's a very anti-aggro card. Basically, none of the tier 1 aggro decks have a viable way of removing this thing, apart from maybe mages with their hero power and arcane missiles. Even then, it takes a lot of mana. Shamans have Earthshock, but Earthshock has fallen out of favor a bit recently. If they see Scarlet Crusader, they might bring it in. Paladin aggro, one of the most popular and most powerful of the three tier 1 aggro decks, has essentially no way of dealing with it because they won't have hero power tokens out if they're trying to jam threats every single turn, which is what they're trying to do if they're an aggro deck. So Scarlet Crusader is a very powerful tech against these aggro decks, especially in aggro mirrors, where they can't really afford to focus on it because you're just going to be playing your own stuff and it just gets ignored for most of the game while continuously killing things. But it does lack a lot of offensive power. If you think about the three drops that are played a lot of the time, you've got Kieran Tor Mage, Injured Blade Master, Shattered Sun Cleric, have massive offensive power. This thing does not have offensive power. It's a very defensive minion by contrast to its relegated to the sideboards a lot of the time. However, this is a very powerful card. Do not underestimate it. The Divine Shield will mess you up. On to Harrison Jones. Now, this guy comes in against combo decks to do with Paladin and Warrior, Hunter Control, because they rely on that weapon, Warriors, and just any weapon class, essentially. They come in against any weapon class, especially though, the most notable one would be Paladin Combo, which is a deck that not many people play, but if you play against it, that True Silver that's pumped up by Greenskin will murder you. Anyway, this is a large source of card advantage against weapon focused decks because of its effect, very powerful effect. However, it's very slow compared to the ooze, so where does this really make it into? Probably aggro decks, because while it seems a bit counterintuitive, you're jamming threats early, and then they play true silver, you need to deal with it on turn 5, and then maybe draw some cards, gets you back into the game, replaces the card that you essentially lost to that true silver. Very good way of dealing with these aggro stopping weapons essentially. The other one would be Arcanite Reaper with upgrades, things like that. These are aggro stopping weapons that Harrison Jones deals very well with. Control mid-range decks might have enough draw power. Mid-range not so much, they can still play this because it's a decent body with the even for 5 mana, decent body is a 
Midrange might have some use for it. Control decks don't really need the draw power. They're too busy lay on handsing and life taps and everything like that. They don't need these Harrison Jones draw power essentially. Now, the reason this isn't played in main deck a lot of the time is because of a couple of reasons. One, it dies to Shadow or Death. Big deal. It's very slow. It's competing with Zero Drake and Silverhand Knight and Gadget San or Shanir, and it's just. It doesn't have sort of the persistent board presence. Which is funny, because it has more attack than Azure Drake and Silverhand Knight, but Silverhand Knight gives you an extra 2-2, two -two. Azure Drake draws your card straight up, they don't need to have a weapon. It's just a bit less reliable for essentially the same effect in a lot of these situations, so it effectively relegates him to the sideboard. Acidic Swamp Ooze is a much more main deckable card because it's faster, and you can just play it as a 2-drop, and it's a reliable 2-drop, it comes in for 3 damage every turn. Harrison Jones is too slow to be a main deck card a lot of the time, especially with this format. Now, on to the deck of the week. Now, this is a segment where I do sort of a mini focus on a deck. It's not really a deck tech, it's just what a deck that's been very popular in Tier 1 has been doing, why it's good, what kind of cards it's known for, and sort of what to expect. So this week I'm going to go over the mage aggro deck, which is everywhere. The other aggro decks that have been around are things like Paladin and Shaman, but a good one to start with is mage aggro. It's a very fast deck, it aims to end the turn on turn 8 usually. Turn 8, 7 with Fireball and Pyroblast, things like that. It plays a lot of buffing effects, Shadowed Sun Cleric, Dark Marine Dwarf, Value 1 and 2 drops, Fairy Dragons, Mana Berserkers, Mana Worms. And it just has a lot of quality removal. That's why it's a powerful deck. Aggro deck with cheap removal. And the hero power helps out a lot. So, onto the key cards. We have Shattered Sun Cleric, Mana Worm, Pyroblast, and Fireball. They do almost the same thing, so I'm keeping them in the same slot. Azure Drake and Argent Commander. Onto Shattered Sun Cleric. Now, this is the breakout card of the last... Since the last patch, essentially. It's incredibly offensive. I talked about this earlier. It buffs something up. It gets it through AoE. It gets it through Ascension if it's an injured Blade Master. If you do turn to this thing with a Mana Worm on the board, that Mana Worm gets plus one attack from the coin and then plus one plus one from the Cleric, making it a turn one, turn one, one three. That's probably not going to get removed. Then on turn two, it attacks for three. And you get a three three along with it. Speaking of the 3-3, the 3-3 body doesn't die to AoE unless you're against Warlocks, but then they're hurting themselves with their own AoE. And it kills most 3-drops. It also kills some 4-drops, if you think about it. And with a removal spell, it kills almost all the 4-drops. Now, later in the game, it can be used like a Raid Leader. It gets 1 extra damage, effectively bringing you down 1. And then with the Hero Power, it's like 2 extra damage. Helps out a lot, you'd be surprised. It also lets you get things like Azure Drake, Argent Commander through a lot of bigger things, buffs up something into the 4 attack range so the priest just can't deal with it because 4 attack is very annoying for a priest. Doesn't like Shadow Words, they have to Holy Smite or Holy Nova, but those don't really work because the health buff, they essentially have to Holy Fire it. So against priest, very powerful. Onto Mana Worm, arguably the best 1 drop in the game. Now, this attacks, for tur this attacks on turn 2 for 3, a lot of the time. Mainly because of things like Coin Arcane Intellect or Coin Shattered Sun Cleric. The coin, going second with this thing and then just pumping out a 3 drop on turn 2 is very effective. Because this gets buffed, it becomes a 2-3 and then you get a 3 drop along with it. Quite often, something that will happen is things like Coin Kirin Tor Mage Secret. And then that's a 3-3 three, three, and you get a 4-3 or you can make it a 3-4 with a 3-3. Three, three. Very offensive openings. This thing will kill most 1-drops without fail, essentially, and pretty much all 2-drops and will even kill some 3-drops. Very cost-effective minion. It's so cost-effective that it forces some sort of crazy early removal like a Shadow Word Pain or a Lightning Bolt or a Rock Fighter Weapon. Or even something a little bit more drastic. I've seen Polymorph have to be used on this kind of thing because it keeps getting in for damage and the attack gets really, really high if you leave it unchecked. Sometimes you get Mana Worms with 6 7 attack. Yeah, you can get a 1 drop into big game Hunter range. It's a very powerful 1 drop. It has to be answered. If it's not answered, it's a win condition on its own. 
onto Pyroboss and Fireball. Now, the reason I put these in the two sort of in the same slot is Pyroboss and Fireball essentially do the same thing. They're used to close out the game with burst damage. So basically, on turn six or seven, you can go Fireball and then you go Pyroblast and essentially end the game. Fireball is also used as removal for taunt minions, things like Senge and Shieldmaster, lesser extent abomination, but most of your things has three health, so it just doesn't die, and then you just fireball it, so you don't have to sacrifice anything. So very often used as removal. Now Pyroblast is just used as burst damage. Why? Because it effectively makes your opponent's starting health 20. You get them down to 10 health, you just Pyroblast them, and you win. You get them down to 10 and you win. You get them down to 5 or 6 or 7 and you win with Fireball and Hero Power. There's just a lot of different outs. It gives a lot of reach to this kind of deck that other aggro decks don't really have. Every aggro deck needs some kind of burn to close out the game late game once the control player has really sort of enforced his board control. You need some sort of reach. And Mage has arguably the best burst damage. Now onto the Azure Drake, one of the best 5 drops in the game. It's a 4-4 which is fairly relevant and also makes priests want to kill themselves because they can't deal with this thing. It also cycles itself so in 90% of situations it's a 2 for 1 because they have to spend a card and then you also draw a card out of it. You didn't spend anything, they spent something. It's just a very good way of enforcing card advantage. You enforce card advantage, your opponent has to deal with it with a card, you didn't actually spend a card, it's just a big deal. Now, there are ways of killing this thing without spending a card, things like Hammer of Wrath, or Spell Power, things like Starfire. These are cycling cards that you deal with this Azure Drake. However, the spell damage is also not something you should forget about. It helps you get a couple extra damage in with Pyroblast and Fireball. With Fireball, you can sometimes get in that little bit of extra damage along with the four attack just to kill them outright. It's also cheap enough to maintain aggression. This is important. At 5 mana, it comes down, slows down your aggression a little bit. However, it's still a 4-4 that beats in every single turn that they have to deal with. If this was more expensive for a bigger body, it would be less powerful because it needs to be cheap to get this kind of thing to work properly. Then, onto Argent Commander, the final card I'm going to talk about. This is the exact definition of 2 for 1. Now, it comes down, charges, kills something, wastes its divine shield, and then they have to kill it. Against priest, this is almost a win condition, because they just can't kill it. If you leave the divine shield on this thing, it will never die to a priest. There is no removal spell for priest that kills this, if it has divine shield on it. They need to go through some crazy loop, or in turn 8, they need to mind control it, at which point they've already taken 12. So, Argent Commander, very powerful against priests, but against other kind of decks, Hunter Control have no way of dealing with this, because you just play it, if it gets sniped, the Divine Shield takes it, Explosive Trap, Divine Shield takes it, Snake Trap, bunch of 1-1s, it absorbs the Snake Trap plus whatever it hit, because the Snake Trap will do 3 damage effectively. And other ones like Freezing Trap, it still only loses 1 turn of tempo. It's a very powerful card against these kind of Hunter Control decks. And it also deals with pretty much every 5 drop in the game, if you think about it. That's Argent Commander, Abomination, Silver Hand Knight. It always kills these things. It doesn't even trade. It just kills these things because of its Divine Shield, gets through pretty much everything. Silver Hand Knight is the closest to killing it, but even then. It also adds that little bit of charge damage. It sometimes needs to close out the game after you fireball them, and this is sort of fireballs copies, what, well, 3 and 4 with a body on it? Very effective overall. So anyway, this has been Jotto. If you like the content, please subscribe. If you have any comments on the show and any feedback, then by all means, say it in the comment section below. If you want to come talk to me on TeamSpeak, I will put the address for TeamSpeak and all the mana grind information in the description. And remember, the deck lists will be in a link. There will be a link to managrind.com with all the deck lists in the description. But as for now, this has been Jodo, signing off.